2012 was exceptional. I've never used the word exceptional as frequently as I have in 2012. The, 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 the weather was, uh, was extreme in, in many, many ways. We, we know it was the wettest uh, year on record in England, and, and down in Somerset that was no different. From April, everywhere was saturated. The, 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 all the agricultural land at that stage was, was, was flooded out. The key in the farmer's diary is that period. Everything's beginning to grow, everything's coming through fast. It's all very green and tender, and uh, it, it all got flooded out. Everything continued wet fr from then on, uh, but it wasn't until November and December where again we got some periods of extended, persistent uh, rainfall with high, high levels of water. The, the, there are two very distinct uh, events. So the, the summer events um, where the, the extent of the flooding wasn't as great, but the moors that were flooded were destroyed. Uh, Currymoor was, was the worst hit and the, the land in there now, as we, as, as we stand, is a long way away from recovering. It's devastating for, for, for those farmers. They, they lost everything in that period and it'll take a number of years for them to recover. We have permanently 43 pumps uh, of, of the type like we have here in the Northmore Pump Station. We brought in an extra 18 temporary pumps and between all those pumps, that meant that we could, uh, in a week, we could pump six billion tonnes of water. If I converted that into buckets, there would be, uh, I think it would be something like 43,000 buckets sitting outside each and every house in Somerset. Rainfall into the moors, hot weather, and trying to pump it out when it become toxic. Uh, we were having to do that across uh, five or six different moors simultaneously. So to do that, we're using hydrogen peroxide. Basically, we, we exhausted the country's supply of hydrogen peroxide. Every manufacturer in the country was increasing its rate of production to, to feed us. I have 40 people in my workforce that cover Somerset. Throughout the period, we brought in over 40 extras from, from other regions, and they're working 24 hours a day. We also are using five different contractors uh, and probably in, increased that by another 20. Another 10 came in from other departments in the Environment Agency, nearly at times trebling the size of our workforce. We've done less dredging in the past uh, and less desilting because how we calculate uh, our benefits is, is very properly focused and reflects less on the agricultural needs. So when we do this sort of analysis to understand where the benefits are for, for, for doing the dredging work, we can't justify it. We've always felt and, uh, that it's very unsustainable. You, you have to keep going back and doing it and doing it, which means it's very costly for, for your gain. What we've been doing is trying to assess uh, the viability, the justification for more extensive dredging in the future. Because that's, that's, that's what we're being asked. That's what the, that's what the farmers, that's what the, you know, the, the many of the uh, uh, landowners are, are lobbying and saying, why aren't you going to dredge? Every farmer in the Somerset Levels has been telling us that if we dredge the rivers, uh, the impact wouldn't have been as bad this year. It, it's absolutely beyond question that uh, many of the farmers have had their business destroyed this year. It's, it's not just the farmers as well, actually. There are small businesses, uh, will, willow farming, e even just small businesses such as a, a bridal suite that were devastated by it. There, there are villages uh, and, and small communities all that have suffered on, on the back of this. We have had more than 20 public meetings where we've engaged with all those communities that have been affected. Quite often, quietly, in, in, in the corner, you'll speak to somebody, uh, you know, a, a couple whose, whose house was, you know, absolutely destroyed, maybe their business was destroyed, and they, to, to, to a certain extent, feel very left out. Um, but that's why we're having all these uh, uh, public meetings, that's why we're, we're having our workshops, to give them a chance to come forward and explain what happened to them, and start to get an understanding of what they can do, um, how they can help themselves, uh, where they can help get help, uh, and what what the future might look like for them. What we're starting to do is to, to see if, there's, uh, if there are options and how we can manage this better that are much smaller in scale than the, the major dredging. And, and typically this has been called pinch points. So we're looking to see whether the locations where a smaller amount of work at a much more local, small scale location, 
will actually improve the conveyance in the river uh, and, and improve the situation. So uh, that involves working with the inland drainage boards, uh, with, with local communities to identify those spots and to assess whether we think they really will give a benefit. Uh, at one stage we feared that uh, the flooding would have devastated bird population in various moors. Uh, by February we discovered that Curry Moor was absolutely full of lapwing uh, and, and widgeon, like never seen before. Looking further ahead, the Somerset levels will look like, or what it should look like, is a different question. Because what we have to sit down and start to understand is, do we want to be here in 20 years' time, still facing the same problems, still trying to, to form the land in this way, trying to live in this way, uh, and still handling the, the, the challenges of uh, exceptional rainfall? The demand for, for uh, maintenance work on the Somerset levels has increased. 2012 uh, demonstrated to, to everybody in their minds that we need to do more. In response specifically to the Somerset levels is pulling together uh, effectively a business case as to why there might be justification in providing extra funding to respond to, to what we had. The big question then is, what would have happened if we hadn't pumped? And that, that would have meant that uh, uh, all the water that, that came through in November would have still been on the moors. All the moors would have been full by the time the rainfall happened in December, which would have meant that something in the region of 30, 40 million tonnes of water would have had to go somewhere. 